Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. The show has an NL East matchup. The Atlanta Braves taking on the Miami Marlins. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. And Chris, we've got an opportunity to watch one of the true superstars of the sport. David Justice. Always exciting to see him in action. And it seems like he consistently finds a way to impact the game. Yeah, Boog, it, it's offensively at the plate, defensively when he's on the bases. And this guy's just a heads-up player, but he's got so much talent, and he makes the most of that. I believe it starts with his preparation because you never see him give away an at-bat. First pitch coming your way next. Just about set to go and towing the slab, Pablo Lopez. Oh, a very solid ERA last season, just a little over three. And when you've got a guy like that uh, taking the mound for you, the offense is definitely expected to score you know, four runs at least unless they're really struggling. So you know more times than not, when he's on the bump, you're going to win the ball game if you just do your part as an offense. So last year, great year. He wants to repeat that or even improve. And I think there is some room for improvement. He's got good stuff. It's just executing from hitter to hitter. Next pitch is outside. And here it comes. Stays alive. And a pitch. And now it's filled up. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Makes the grab on the run. And there's one down. Here's Brian Snickers lined up for the Braves. And down towards the bottom of the lineup, hitting eighth here, Matt Olson. Yeah, definitely someone I always enjoy, you know, when I get a chance to watch him, whether he's hitting a game or even taking swings during batting practice. Man, this guy's always so focused on what he's doing on that task at hand. He's got so much attention to detail that when he steps in the box, his success rate is really high. One down, base is empty. Fouls one away, and now three and two. Right-hander kicks, deals. Line drive. And he pulls up on it, and that's a hit. pitch was in and off the plate so hard to do anything with the pitch in that location but somehow he got the barrel to it and hit it well pretty amazing and now they've got some speed on first so we'll see if they try to get him into motion one down now it's the right fielder Hank Aaron the 1-1 one -one. and of course when it comes to Hank Aaron he's one of the greatest sluggers of all time 755 career homers a record that stood for a long time And the pitch. Ball. I got three one. Three ball, one strike. We Swings and, and misses. Three and two now. Almost goes without saying that Mr. Aaron set the standard for power hitters in the sport for years. I mean, just an incredible 23 year career. At the belt and fires. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Hayward, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. That one is absolutely belted. Way back there. Pulls it in on the warning track. Batting four, the third baseman, Eddie Matthews. Man at first, here's the third baseman, Eddie Matthews. Good power, not great in the OBP department. Pulls that one foul.
Throw to first. Hayward back on a dive. You know, lots of pitches thrown in this first inning. And it's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. Swing and a high fly ball left field. Matthews gone on the play. And that will end the inning. One left for Atlanta. Now the Marlins will see what they can do. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. We go to the bottom of the first. Our starting pitcher in this one, John Smoltz. Chris, he's looking for a bounce back this season. Yeah, really struggled last year, and it was one of those seasons that you just want to flush. But I think you have to remember and take the opportunity when you do struggle to really look yourself in the mirror, identify what went wrong, and make improvements. And I have no doubt that that's what this guy did in the offseason to prepare himself to come back and to be one of the best bounce-back players in the league. We'll see today. He'll have a real opportunity to prove a lot of people wrong. And that's a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Really nice job of two strike hitting in that at bat. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and lifted into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. Now, Brian De La Cruz. Two balls, one strike, the count. The 2-1. Runner on the goal. Pitch in for a strike. The throw comes in too late, and they don't get an out on the play. Got him. One away. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically he likes to shoot the ball the other way, but that time, a little anxious. Gary Sheffield, the next up for the Marlins. That misses, and it's two and two. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. Runner takes off for third. Pitch is low. And now a wide throw to third. No score here, but a runner at third with one down. And that's ball four. Oh, looking for a swing and miss right there or for the ump to help him out and make the call with that last pitch. But neither happened. Close pitch, but a good take to earn that walk. So one out with two aboard. Jazz Chisholm now. The 1-1. One -one. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Justice in position. And puts the squeeze on that one. Runner tags from third. Jones with a relay home. In there. He scores. And it's 1-0. Well, that's a quality at bat right there. You know the situation. You need something in the air and deep enough. And that's exactly what he did. Good pass to the baseball. And now it's Jesus Aguilar. And the right-hander deals. At the ball. They've got him working a little harder in this first frame than he anticipated. The pitch. A little out front there as he swings through it. Sheffield leads off first with two down to the inning. Stays alive. 
That fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. He's going, he's Here's the going pitch. Better. Run around the goal. That one ripped. Dives, but it falls. And now it looks like extra bases. The run scores all the way from first. And they lead by two. Nice double right there. Loud contact coming off the bat. Didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here, but you'll take that swing and that result every time. And now it's Garrett Cooper up to him. A guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. The pitch. And now one and two. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss, get into that dugout and hit the reset button. Righty to the plate. Got him. Good job of damage control right there. Second inning coming up here in South Florida. It's the Marlins two and the Braves nothing. And welcome back. Here's Acuna now. This guy is an elite level hitter, especially considering contact, just the ability to hit for average. What you really like, though, stays in against those righties and that's not so easy as a right-handed batter that one misses so a leadoff walk I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow and next for Atlanta David Justice left-hand hitter waits swing and a high fly ball pretty well struck right field that one back caught right up against the fence Now it's the Atlanta catcher, Joe Torrey. Two for eight in the series so far. Fouls one away and now three and two. Righty delivers. And a base hit on a line. Throw into third. Into third now. So runners at the corners and one out. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. Here's Matt Olson. And a pitch. He swings and fouls one off. He deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Two on, one out. Off the mark there. And the count is two and two. And a pitch. Lined, and that's a base hit. In comes the run from third. It's 2-1. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Two on, one out. And the batter now, Ozzie Albies. 
homered in the ball game yesterday afternoon. In the air, out towards left center, and all these is retired. And there's two down. Back to the top of the lineup. Now it's the shortstop, Chipper Jones. He's over one. First and second, two down. Next one misses, and it's two and one. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Swing and a miss. And that is strike two. So the tying run at second stays alive. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit. But when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. Next pitch just misses. And that's ball three. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Two outs, a couple of base runners at first and second. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Payoff pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Two outs and a foul ball. Slow roller to first. He takes it on his own. That ends the inning, and they limit the damage. But the RBI single pushes across a run, and it's now a 2-1 ball game. Welcome back. Bottom half of inning number two. And now for the Marlins, Joey Wendell. Next offering is fouled back. Up the middle. Chipper fires to first. One up, one down. I love how guys at this level are able to slow the game down, whether it's in the batter's box or on defense. And right there, that was a good job of knowing just how much time he had. We talk about that internal clock. He was able to gather himself, get a good grip, and make an accurate throw across the diamond. Miguel Rojas at the plate. The wind and the pitch. And now it's even up. pitch stays alive the pitch and a foul ball he stays alive but why to kick the pitch Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. Ripped on a line. And there's two away.
batting ninth. The catcher, Jacob. Go Two away. outs, base is empty. Here's the catcher, Jacob Stallings. This is a guy who's in the lineup first and foremost because of what he contributes defensively, Chris. And when you talk about preventing runs from being scored, this guy is a big contributor. The wind of the pitch. Good eye right there. Bounce to third. Base hit. And that keeps the inning alive. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock. And we'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Juan Pierre. Left hand batter waits. Ground ball right side. He handles it himself, and that'll do it. Marlins leave one as they're unable to add to their 2-1 lead. Top half of the third inning. Now the number two hitter, Jason Hayward. Kicks and fires. Next offering misses down and away. So important for him to control the heart rate right now. He's got to go through the heart of this lineup. Hey. The 3-1 in for a strike. Full count. Kicks and deals. This one chopped in the ground, but foul. Ripped into left center, base hit. And that's going to roll to the wall. Into second base. The tying run is on with a leadoff double. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night and just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. And now Hank Aaron. Here comes a pitch. Yeah, now two balls and a strike. One of the amazing things about Hank Aaron is the consistency he had over the course of his career. And he deals. And that's outside. In terms of that consistency, making an all-star game in 21 straight seasons is a pretty good indicator of what a steady player Hank was. Runner at second, nobody out. And now a full count. There were no bad seasons for Hammer and Hank. There were hardly even any bad days. Man, it's second. And there's ball four. Well, he earned his trip to first right there. It's not easy laying off pitches that just missed the zone like that. And it's a real discipline as well. He's put a lot of work into that aspect of his game, and it paid off right there. A 1-1. One, one. It's a big opportunity right here, but I love the way he's slowing the game down. He's shrinking his zone, making sure he gets the pitch that he wants to hit. Ball Next three. offering misses. Three balls and a strike. You know, Boog, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. Swing and a miss, and it's a full count now. For this guy, it's truly a battle when he steps into the box. Only one thing on his mind, seeing that pitch out of the hand and hit it hard somewhere.
And he walked him. His ability to draw walks has been something that's been part of his career since day one. Bases loaded, nobody out. Here's Ronald Acuna Jr. at the plate. And he grounds one to the right side. And it goes just foul. And you strike out, and you need a ball perhaps on the ground for a double play or get yourself a pop-up, something. But you've got to make some pitches. But if he can battle and get through this, he can earn some points. Lopez gets the swing and the miss. Huge strikeout there. Oh, this guy's been pretty much a non-factor so far this weekend. Very little in the way of impactful at-bats and quality at-bats and let alone contact. That's the sixth time they've set him down on strikes in the series. So no doubt frustration mounting and very high right now. So digging in, David Justice. Glide out his first time. Base hit, one run is in. The tying run is in to score, and we are starting over. It's 2-2. Well, that was an important at bat in this game, so a great job there stepping up to the challenge. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Now in for the Braves, Joe Torre. Pitch misses there. Two balls and a strike. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. And the pitch. On the ground to third. Quick feed to second for one. What a double play that was. Getting over. But they pick up one run on the RBI single. 2-2 game. Back here at Lone Depot Park. Now the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. And he grounds one back up the middle, and there's a hit. Off to a good start with a leadoff nod. Up next for the and up next for Miami, Gary Sheffield. Sheffield. And that one moves his feet. De La Cruz gets his lead at first. Nobody out. Steel, steel, Run steel. around the goal. That's in for a strike. Throw to second. Ow! Well, I really didn't expect him to try to steal second base because he had a very standard lead at best. If you're going to try to get there safely, you've got to get more on that lead. You've got to get a better jump. That was the difference between being safe and out. Here's a 2-2. And another ball. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah. A little slider action. The pitch. On the ground to third. Whips it across. That's out number two. No matter. Number two. Second baseman. Jazz Chisholm. Two outs, base is empty. Jazz Chisholm, the next up for the Marlins. The 1-1. One, one. There's a swing and a drive. And it's out of here. He flexes his power with that swing, his first homer of the year, and the Marlins jump out in front. It's 
That slider on the outside part of the plate is typically hit the other way, but to be able to get to it, pull the baseball, and get it up in the air for a home run, I'm just really impressed. So two down, and at the plate for Miami, Jesus Aguilar doubled his first time up. That one misses, and it's two and one. The wind of the pitch. Good eye right there. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. With that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Right-hander kicks deals. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Now that the Garrett Cooper, the next Garrett. up for the Marlins. Cooper. Here's a 1-1. On the ground to third. A dive. He's got it. It's there, and that's a great play. One for the Marlins on the solo shot. It's now a 3-2 ball game. Back here in Miami, John Chompy with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Matt Olson. And the right hander deals. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. Three one is on the way. Hey. That clips the corner. Three ball, two strike. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. The pitch stays alive. Foul ball there. And a pitch. Lopez gets the swing and the miss. And there's one down. Ozzie Albee's up to the plate. Second baseman. Ozzie Albee. There's a 1-1. One -one. Just missed. Miami's bullpen with some action. Sixto Sanchez preparing to come on if needed. Next offering in the dirt. Now three and one. And a pitch. And that's ball four. Gosh, another walk in this one. Man, he is having some real issues with control. So now to the plate for Atlanta. Chipper, Chipper. Jones. Jones. Albies leads off first with one away. Next offering is downstairs. The 2 1. No, oh, he's really working him away this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity, try to get a rollover, something on the ground, stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. Right into the plate. Albies on the move. Pitch in for a strike. Save it, Zackin, with a stolen base. Runner at second here, one gone. Hard hit, left side. Over to Aguilar. 
And they get the out on Jones. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Jason Hayward. Now at the plate, Jason Hayward. Three for six in the series so far. Runner leads away at second. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and mess, and you walk off the field. Back here at the ballpark, bottom of the fourth, here's Joey Wendell. Breaks his bat. There's a soft liner. Whips it to first on the run. And a quick out number one. Up next for the Marlins. The shortstop. Miguel. Rojas. And now Miguel Rojas. Righty delivers. And strike two. Threw that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. The pitch. Off the outside edge, and now the count is two and two. Here's the 2-2. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Pitch misses. And it's 3-2. and two. And the righty deals. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. The pitch. And he walked him. What a battle. It's not always easy laying off a 3-2 pitch. And I tell you what, he earned that walk. Jacob Stallings now. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. Is a 1 1. It's so impressive because these guys have to do so much study and preparation for their pitchers, for opposing hitters, and really their number one job is to guide that staff through a ball game. And so when you also can. Flips it behind his back. Play made, that ends the inning. On to the top of the fifth we go. It's the Marlins three and the Braves two. Sixto Sanchez on the pitch here. He's making his second appearance of the season. Well, at this point of the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and he need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. New inning getting started, and stepping in is the speedy Hank Aaron. And here it comes. And a count one and two. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. And a swing and a line drive at a right field, and that's a base hit. And the leadoff man aboard. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today, so impressed with his ability to let the ball travel, go back up the middle and the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But so far, I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation. And now it's Atlanta's cleanup hitter. Runner takes off. Pitch in for a strike. And that's a stolen base, not even close.
Right-handed reliever. Got him! Now one away. Well, I'm not really sure why he let that one go by. I mean, out of the hand, it had a lot of the strike zone. Sure, it had some good arm side run at the end to move to the outside part of the plate. But with two strikes, you got to be ready to swing it there, and you can't leave it in the umpire's hands. And here is Ronald Acuna Jr. Bounced up the middle. Chisholm collects to first, and he beats it. Got himself in great position and couldn't have played that one any better, but just stood no chance with that great speed running down the line. Justin. Runners at the corners here, one away. Here's the left fielder, David Justice. Next offering is in for a strike. One, two now. Just a slow ground ball this time. Over to Chisholm. There's one. Over to first, safe. I promise you, they're guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of it. Joe Torrey, next up for the Braves. Next offering is in for a strike. Two outs. Stays alive. Line drive, caught! So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Last half of the fifth coming up. All tied up at three apiece. Bottom of the inning, and now here's a speed threat. Outfielder, Juan Pierre. The wind and the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he waves at that one. That split, he's a pretty nasty pitch. Explodes out of the hand, looks like a fastball, and the bottom just falls out of it. That one misses, two and two. The wide to kick the pitch. And now the count filled up three and two. Really good take, especially with two strikes. The pitch. Popped up left side. Justice makes the grab. And there's one down. Now that the left fielder. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. Kicks and fires. That's in there. Here comes a pitch. Tapped softly on the ground. Fires to first on the run. All half of the fifth inning moving along. Two quick outs. The right fielder, number 10. Gary Sheffield, the next up for the Marlins. This guy has turned into a beast. Next pitch misses, and it's two and one. This is important. If he can go one, two, three here, will be a very positive sign for him and for his team. And a pitch. 
Swing and blast one down the line. It's gone if it's fair, but it hooks foul. Clearly he was geared up for the fastball right there. Maybe got a little jumpy and excited out of the hand, but he certainly didn't miss a stitch. And down on strikes. Third out, and that ends the frame. Nothing doing for the Marlins. Score remains tied at three. Top six, now in for the Braves, Matt Olson. The next pitch misses, two and one. Action in the pen down there. Richard Blyer getting ready to go. Line drive, base hit. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. Really stayed inside that baseball to send it to the opposite field. With the shift on to the pole side, that's an easy knock if you'll take it. No outs. Runner at first. Here is Ozzy Albies up to hit. Next offering is down low. Olsen aboard here at first with nobody out. Run, run, run. And there he goes. And that one fouled off. Comes a 2-2. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Kicks and deals. On the ground, into the outfield, base hit. Throw back in quickly, first and second now with nobody out. Back-to-back -back singles, not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. A chance now to take the lead, and at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. So the lineup flips over, and now Chipper Jones. Well, he's always a threat. Even if this guy is 0 for 3 for the night with three strikeouts, he can come up that fourth time and do damage because he's that good. And a pitch. Late on that fastball. This is an opportunity to do some damage, but you've got to be selective. Make sure you get a pitch that you can handle. Here's a one-two. Way inside, gets out of the way. Over to Aguilar. Now one gone in the top of the sixth. Good fade and sinking action of that changeup. Got that hitter to roll over. And next for Atlanta, Jason Hayward for the fourth time tonight. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. The 2 2. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Second and third here, one away. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Well, he got challenged with a good fastball right there, just couldn't catch up. Left hand batter waits. Strike three, got him swinging. Two out. Certainly a strikeout situation right there. The infield playing back, and this pitcher has to step off and get the swing and miss. Really nice job of attacking the hitter at the plate. Pretty big two out at bat coming up now.
Hank Aaron getting ready to hit. Check swing, but he went too far. And that's strike two. Right-hander kicks deals. Base hit. One run is in. He's in there. Well, there you go. The RBI machine. Another clutch run scoring at bat. Yeah, he's been so good in these situations. Call it clutch if you want, but his resume speaks for itself. So the Marlins go with a new arm. Richard Blyer. This is his first appearance of the season. Eddie Matthews next up for the Braves. A strikeout and a walk. And he deals. I got two on the count. Blyer checks on first, and he's back in there. Next one misses, and now three and one. Chris, with that distraction and a speedy guy at first, he's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. Left-hand hitter waits. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. Aguilar over to first in time. Matthews gone on the play. That's the third out. To the bottom of the six we go. Four, five, six coming up. It's the Braves five and the Marlins three. Well, we go bottom six. Now it's the second baseman, Jazz Chisholm. The wind of the pitch. And that one is lifted in the air. Justice glides to his left. Puts the squeeze on that one. One down. Number, baseman, number 99. Jesus. Jesus Aguilar. The next up for the Marlins. And here's a 3-2. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page now right down. now. The designated hitter, Garrett Cooper. And here is Garrett Cooper. Good contact guy, good defender. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Three up, three down, inning over. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. Still a two-run deficit. It's 5-3. We go to the top of the seventh. So here's the Braves' designated hitter, Ronald Acuna Jr., The next ball. offering misses and a count two and one. Yeah, two ball, one strike. Acuna punches one foul right side. This to center field. Brings it in, and there's one down. The left fielder, number 23, David Justice. David Justice, now at the plate. One for three. So, a foul ball makes it one and two.
The pitch stays alive. The pitch. That one just misses. Two balls, two strikes. No, he's not afraid to fall into a two-strike count. Knows the strike zone very well, so much so that I think umpires will look at him and determine whether it's a ball or strike, if he swings or not. Sheffield, ranging to his right. Out number two. The catcher, number nine, Joe Torrey. Two outs, base is empty. Joe Torrey, next up for the Braves. And a pitch. That's and it is two and one. Count is two and one. Aye. That one in for a strike, two and two. And a pop-up, right side, foul territory. Dives, what a play! We refer to third base as the hot corner, but that one was a hot one on the other side of the diamond. Nice job, quickly leaving the ground, makes the catch, and that ends the inning. Welcome back. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now for the Marlins, Joey Wendell. The 1 1. In the air, left side. And that will fall. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you to come through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. That's a ball that a lot of times you'll see the shortstop or left fielder be able to get to if it hangs up in the air long enough. But right there, it just died and found a way to drop in on the green stuff with base hit. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. Runner at first with no outs here. Liner. Hayward puts the squeeze on that one, and there's one away. Man, that's one of those at bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right, right there. Nothing to show for it, but in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at bat. Now, here is Jacob Stallings, one for two. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. Next oh, offering down. misses, and a count two and one. Really good athlete, and many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher, there goes Wendell. Ball misses. Throw to second, and great jump. And that one pulled foul. Wendell, the runner at second with one away. In the air, out towards right center. Great effort as he's able to haul it in. And there's two away. Now batting, center fielder, Juan Pujan. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. John Smoltz, done for the night. And as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back.
Here comes A.J. Minter to the mound, and he'll work on holding this lead. Well, I think that what makes him so tough against left-handers is he hides the ball for a long time, and from that same side, harder for you to determine which part of the plate it's going to end up on. Juan Pierre, the next to hit. Chris, his skill set straight out of the mid-80s. Good contact, not much power, and he could run. He always uses the wheels to his advantage. His biggest challenge in this day and age is to not get caught up in trying to hit home runs because so many people are. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Pretty much the last thing you want from your bullpen arms are free passes, especially in spots like this. You make the team earn their way on. So first and second with two outs. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. And now the lefty on the ground, right side. All these, they get the force. That is the inning. Marlin strand a pair. They're still down 5 3. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Zach Pop, and his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance. Here is Matt Olson. That one missed. Two one now. Ground ball to the right side. Chisholm handles. Tosses to first. And that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Good sinker low in the zone right there and produced exactly what he was looking for. Ball on the ground. Nice ground out. Ozzy Albies will hit next. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. And a pitch. That one fouled off two and two. Righty delivers. High fly ball pretty well struck out towards right center. Feeling for the wall as he makes the catch. Every day during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. So now to the plate for Atlanta, Chipper Jones. Up the middle. On to first. Out. And they get the out on Jones. Third out. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Braves five and the Marlins three. George Kenley on three. here. And he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. Number 74. Kenley. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. And at the plate for Miami, Gary Sheffield. One one now. And that one fouled off. Jansen. He's known as a reliever that excels in really tough situations. Those high leverage spots. It seems like he's at his best in these situations. And obviously the ability to get the strikeout factors in. The next pitch misses. The count now two and two. Yeah, there are certain guys that expect to come in and dominate, and they see the challenge, the battle, just a little bit differently. They trust their stuff, and they believe that their stuff is better than that guy standing in the batter's box, what his swing, what his ability is. Straighten him up a little bit. And 
And there's a rocket into the outfield. Oh, just a nice job coming through in a pretty high leverage spot right there. Pretty much a model swing on that one as he ripped it into the opposite field gap. And I'm sure he's going to be watching that one back on video because that's the kind of swing you want to bottle. So many positives that led to that knock. And now it's going to be Jazz Chisholm. Next offering is in for a strike. The mental approach is a big factor too, isn't it? Yeah, Boog, it is. And, you know, for each guy, it can be a little different. Some people consciously work on focusing, slowing things down, breathing techniques. And then there's some players that are just natural, and they just seem to be more composed and less excitable. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of a double play here. The tying run at the plate. A lot of times with relievers, they just like to get amped up and they're not really looking to try and slow it down, right? They're just trying to get hyper. Yeah, and perhaps make that hitter a little hyper and make him more aggressive. And that way, when they put a wrinkle, change speeds, he's out in front just a little bit. Swing and a miss. Struck him out and one away. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Next pitch is outside and just hacking like you used to. Yeah, kind of the same, just like that, yeah. The 2-1. And now 2-2. Two and two. Two, two down. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Two two now. That one out to right. Hank under it. And puts the squeeze on that. And there's two down. Now back the deputy Garrett. And now, Garrett Cooper. Sheffield off of first with two away. Jansen with a move to first. And it's even up. And the right hater deals. And a good eye there. 3 2, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. Check on the runner. Sheffield dives back in safely. Righty to the plate. Swing and a miss, and that is that. One left for Miami. Still a two-run deficit. It's 5-3. Tanner Scott gets the call from the pen, and he'll do his best to keep this close. Number 66, Tanner Scott. We go to the ninth. Now, here is Jason Hayward. Lifted in the air, right field. 
Sheffield makes the catch, and there's one down. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. Now in for the Braves, Hank Aaron. And what a two-way player, not just offensively, but as good a defensive outfielder as there is in the game. The pitch. Well, that's today's style of baseball right there, right? Big time velo on the bump and big time pop at the plate. So now three and two. Slapped foul. The pitch. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Good battle here, about to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. And there's ball four. Perfect. Oh, you know this guy wants to swing it, but he's showing some good patience in this one. It's the second time he's taken ball four. Man at first with one gone, Eddie Matthews. Next up for the Braves. The lefty ready and a 1 1. There's a strike. Good pitch to hit on a tee up in the zone. I think he was looking for something else right there. Kicks and fires. And that's down and away. And here it comes. Stays alive. Here comes a pitch. The punch out there. That's out number two. Well, that slider wasn't even close to the strike zone, and he got him to chase. That's just a bad approach right there. Either he was looking for something else and got completely fooled, or he was sitting all over the slider and just couldn't resist the temptation. But, man, really expanded right there and didn't have a chance of making contact with that pitch. Man at first, and next for Atlanta, Ronald Acuna Jr. at the belt and fires. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. And a pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Scott throws over. Hank gets back easily. Another throw over. And he's back in that time as well. foul ball now move to first Hank back easily that one fouled off To kick the 3 2. Swing at a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Grinding a B right here. About to see pitch number 10. Got him looking. That's his second strikeout. Bottom part of the order 7 8 9. Two up in inning number 9. It's the Braves 5 and the Marlins 3. Jay Lee gets handed the rock out of the pen. And this guy can bring it velocity-wise.
And welcome back. Now the third baseman, Joey Wendell. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Three, two on the way. That one clubbed out towards left center. That'll be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. In safely. It's a double and his second hit. Drove that ball nicely. Put a great swing on it. And it jumped off his bat. Kind of put it all together there. And he's rewarded with the double. And up next for Miami, Miguel Rojas. And the righty deals. And there's a ball. No, no base hits in the series for him so far, and it's clearly been a rough one. You just hope he's not pressing too hard because that just compounds things. It makes the slump even longer. Never seemed to help. Never helped me. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Swing and a pop-up. Jones settles underneath it. Pulls it down, and he makes the catch. And there's one down. Now batting, catcher, Jacob Stallings. And here's the catcher, Jacob Stallings. Listen, there's absolutely no reason to pitch to this guy right here. You nibble, you see if he'll expand his zone, but don't give him anything to hit. If you walk him, not a big deal. You have a double play opportunity set up. One out, and a runner at second. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And they're down to their last out. So the batting order turns over. Juan Pierre digs in now. Feels like it's less common today that you see a guy like this. The speed component, the contact component, but lack of power. Down to their final strike. That one just misses. Man at second. Swing and a pop-up. And there it is. The ball for his first career save deserves to be on display at his house. I mean, it's kind of like when a restaurant frames its first dollar bill somewhere on a wall. You just can't forget your first save. A 5-3 final score in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious Atlanta Braves five runs 10 hits no errors they left 10 men on base for the Marlins three runs on eight hits no errors they left eight men on base time of the ball game three hours and three minutes thank you for joining us here this evening we remind you to please Drive home safely.